everybody. Let's talk about building wealth and investing in particular for this video. If you are new to me and my channel, welcome. My name is Rebecca. I am here on YouTube documenting my journey to fire, reach financial independence, and retire early. A huge, massive part of that journey of me reaching financial independence is my investing journey. And truth be told, I haven't really done a ton of videos on my channel showing y'all my portfolio, my uh, specific stocks that I'm invested in, but I do want to start doing that. Uh, the biggest reason I haven't done it a lot up until this point is because I only recently got a computer and internet at my house. For the first couple years here on YouTube, I was doing everything solely from my phone and while I could technically do a screen record and, you know, make it work, showing y'all my portfolio reviews and things. It was really difficult to do that. So now that I've gotten this new computer and I'm starting to get comfortable with it, I would like to start showing y'all my portfolio and doing um, regular updates. I'm thinking maybe monthly, but at the same time, I didn't want to just jump straight into that and be like, hey, here's my portfolio review. Let's take a look. I feel like there needed to be some preamble before I just jump right in and do that. So for a while now, I have been brewing over how I'm going to make a video about investing and keep it any kind of decent length. So ultimately what I've decided to do is break it down into a video series. So I, this is going to be part one. I'm going to talk about why I am investing and in future videos I'll break down the how I'm investing, where I'm investing, what I'm investing in, all of those things and then the portfolio reviews that I do should make a whole lot more sense to you guys. So if you are new here, welcome. My backstory is that I am a married woman living in rural North Carolina. We are a dual income household with no kids but my husband and I keep our finances separate that's just that's just what works for us at this point on my channel I've been hugely transparent for years now I show y'all my budgets every month how much money I plan to bring in and then at the end of the month we reconcile that plan and see how well I did and where all of my money went going out and I have been showing y'all how much I've been putting towards savings and investing, but we really haven't, you know, done a deep dive into what I'm investing in and where. But I couldn't do an entire video discussing all of that and my fire strategy and everything because that would just be an hours long video. So that's why I decided to break this down into a series. So for this video, why invest? Again, some more of my backstory here. I first dipped my toes into this financial community here on YouTube because I had reached a point in my life where I had gotten so much consumer debt that I was literally living paycheck to paycheck with very little every month left over. I didn't like how tight things were every month and me always feeling like I was solely going to work and the money that I was earning from my job was going to pay bills before I even had a chance to enjoy any of it. It was uh, just this never ending hamster wheel. And so when I first got into personal finance and discovered this whole finance community on YouTube, the first thing that I ran into naturally was Dave Ramsey. And I do credit Dave Ramsey a lot for piquing my interest in personal finance and getting me to start using a written budget and living beneath my means and getting motivated to get a grip on my debt but that's really all I can credit him for but you know that's a great starting point for people so no shade in this video for Dave Ramsey but I truly feel like I outgrew Dave Ramsey's teachings I feel like once you actually learn how money works, what it can do for you, then you start to understand what you need to do in your own unique situation in order to better your financial future, not solely just to get out of debt, but reach financial independence and better your financial future for your family, for yourself, and for future generations, your children, if you have any. Granted, I don't have any, but I still plan on 
making a difference in the world once I reach financial independence. Imagine how different your life could be if you weren't on that hamster wheel constantly, just running yourself to death at work to pay your bills every week when you get paid and continue again for the next 40 years until you hopefully have saved something for retirement and you're able to stop and try to enjoy the few years you have left. Some people never even get to enjoy those few years because they never learn this stuff and they reach retirement age and realize that you can't get time back and they haven't saved enough for retirement. So once I realized that it was about more than getting out of debt, I had to figure out what the next step was logically to build wealth. And for me, that's investing. I am a passive investor for the vast majority of how I invest. What that means for me is that I like to invest in index funds and ETFs, very broad-based, low-cost, U.S. total stock market index funds or the S&P 500, that is where the majority of my invested money is. It is a super simple approach, very passive, anybody can do it. People get intimidated by investing and it is a lot to learn. I think you could spend a lifetime and not learn everything that there is to learn about investing, but the great thing about it is you don't need to know everything about it to be successful doing it. And there are other ways that you can build wealth. There's faster ways too. Um, you know, people really get heavy into real estate. Landlording is not for me. Some people get hyped up about building businesses and granted, I am technically a business because I registered my uh, YouTube channel as an LLC, but you know, this is not a massive income producer for me by any means. But still, some people really do enjoy building up businesses and just getting massive growth and returns from that. And then there's people like me who just work a W-2 job and that is my main source of income. I do ultrasound for a living if you didn't know. I work third shift, which is why a lot of times in my videos I am either filming before I go into work or in the process of getting ready to go to work. Everything I do in life is pretty much based around my weird work schedule and uh, that is why the fire movement appeals to me so much. I am ready to base my life and my time around what it is I want to do, what lights me up every day, instead of having to base everything I do, whether it's doctor's appointments or vet appointments, anything in life, I always have to think first, what is my work schedule? Am I working that day? Can I get off from work? I am just ready to be my own boss of my own time. Had to adjust my phone holder, it was about to fall down. Anyway, how I plan to become the boss of my own time is through reaching financial independence. Again, not just debt freedom, but financial independence. And how I'm going to do that is through investing. That is my why for wanting to invest. I don't see any other way for me personally that I could more easily reach financial independence than starting to invest my money. So if I'm not going to landlord or build a super huge profitable business or take on multiple jobs just to be able to invest more, then um, I have to concentrate on reducing my expenses month to month and increasing my savings rate. That is huge in the FIRE community. So that's what I try to do every month when I show y'all my budgets is show all the money that I've got coming in and all the money that's going out, whether it be through paying off more debt or choosing to invest it. I think once you learn the very basics about investing, it immediately becomes less intimidating. And the longer that I've been a part of this financial community on YouTube, the more hardened that I am because I'm starting to see a lot more female channels get into investing. and. It is way past due, y'all. I know there's a lot of ladies out there that don't like to talk about it because they're intimidated by it maybe, or they're just not confident that they know enough about it. So they don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, but you know, nobody has a perfect investing journey. We all do make mistakes. It's part of the learning process, but investing really does not have to be super complicated. 
one of the books that I recommend um, if you're brand new to investing and you want to keep it simple like I do I love The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. I always have that book linked in my description box down below. That book is worth its weight in gold. If you don't know anything about investing, you owe it to yourself to take a day or two to read through that book. It's not super long, but it will give you the knowledge that you need to allay your fears of investing and get you started. Here's the thing, if you are a passive investor like me in broad-based low-cost index funds or ETFs, there are only two ways that you will lose money in the stock market. One is if you sell when the markets have a downturn because you get scared and panic and you pull your money out. A lot of people do this and they do lose money that way because they don't understand that the market will have fluctuations. That is part of the market cycle. It's going to happen. It's normal. It's a good thing. It will return back to normal. But a lot of people panic and pull their money out at the bottom and thus lock in the losses. That is one way that you can lose money when you invest in the market. The thing to remember about when the market takes a downturn is that when your portfolio value dips, you still own the same number of shares that you had before when your portfolio was at an all-time high. You own the same amount of shares. Yes, the value of those shares has gone down, but it will recover. And as long as you don't pull your money out, then you won't lose any money. When your portfolio dips, it's just a theoretical loss unless you sell. So that's one way people can lose money in the stock market if they are investing in broad-based, low-cost index funds. The other way is if the entire U.S. economy completely collapses, every single publicly traded business on the U.S. stock market goes bankrupt and broke and everything just goes to hell then yeah, you would lose money in the stock market that way, but no one would really care because we've got bigger issues to deal with at that point. So don't be afraid to invest. It is the best way to get good returns on your money long term, in my opinion. I think it's just the easiest way to go about doing it. Now, y'all take that for what you will. I am absolutely not a financial advisor. None of this should be taken as financial advice. I am just out here a real person in the real world working a real W-2 job trying to better my own financial future. But guys, this stuff is not taught in our school system. The only way that you're going to learn this stuff is if you take the time to learn it yourself. Nobody is going to force feed this to you. And honestly, if someone is not in a space where they're willing to listen, then there's nothing you can do anyway. You can't force people to do anything that they don't want to do. So when I discovered the whole fire movement and had my light bulb moment and I could not unsee the things that I had learned about financial independence, retire early. I wanted to preach it from the rooftops and that is why I started this channel because I was like, oh my god, this is what I have to do now. This is, this is my life and uh, no one else in my immediate family and real life was uh, super interested about that because I mean honestly, there's very few of us out here who like to talk about budgets and saving money and investing Everybody seems to have this consumerist mindset of, oh, yeah, that seems nice. I'll deal with that later. They keep kicking the can down the road until they realize when they approach retirement age that they should have done things differently, but too late at that point. So these are some of my reasons why I want to invest to reach financial independence. Very few people ever seem to question any other way of doing things. We're taught in schools to be just a cog in the wheel and pick something that you like to do, get trained on how to do that job, work that job until you reach retirement age and then enjoy the few years that you have left. And 
I think that is ingrained so hard into us when we're in school that that paired with just how consumeristic our society is, you know, lifestyle inflation is a huge thing. It is normal and expected that when you have an increase in income, you increase your lifestyle. That is it. Everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses, have the newest, best, fanciest stuff compared to their neighbor. And no one ever really questions that there might be a better way to go about doing things. Everyone just does what everybody else does without thinking for themselves. We all have such a fast paced lifestyle that no one ever truly stops to ask themselves what is important to me, not what society says should be important, but what do I feel is important to me and how can I align my life and my finances to make it so that I can spend more time doing those things that are truly important to me. People don't ask those questions and I think they don't ask because they really don't understand finances well enough either because again that's that's not something that's taught in schools here. So this consumerist culture that we are living in paired with a lack of knowledge about personal finance and investing in general creates this society where we're gonna have a retirement crisis. Um, I think something like only 49% or 48% of people in America actually have anything invested at all. And uh, that's really sad. That means that it's we're gonna have a retirement crisis. People my age, you know, even though I'm planning on retiring early, I am not counting on getting Social Security just because I think it would be a better safety margin to not include that in my calculations. I am not including any income from this YouTube channel if it grows. I just want a large safety margin so that I can feel more prepared for when life does go haywire and things happen that are out of your control. I think of the 48 to 49 percent of Americans who actually are invested, I think probably the vast majority of those people have no idea what they are investing in, how much it's costing them. I think they probably have really no idea how it even works. The vast majority of people that are invested are probably just investing through their 401k, which is great. but. They likely just ticked some boxes to sign up for the program and they could be getting charged ridiculous fees for investing and not even know it. So again, this stuff, you need to learn it. Investing is just super important. It's something that we all need to learn. You don't have to know everything about it in order to take control of your own finances and start making your own decisions as far as what is best for you in your unique situation. We are all different and there is no, or I should say that there shouldn't be a one size fits all cookie cutter plan for everyone because we are all unique with different situations. So yeah, this video, it was a very stream of consciousness and I tend to ramble a lot on my channel. So sorry, not sorry, that's just how I am. but. I really do love this whole topic of investing and I knew that there was just no way that I could cram everything about my strategy and my plans into one video. So for this one, just talking about the why investing is so important, I figured was enough. We can cover the where, how, what, and when in other videos upcoming. Again, I will put all of these videos that I am doing about investing into a series. I'll make a playlist for it. And then sometime soon here, we'll start actually taking a look at my uh, portfolio and doing some portfolio reviews with M1 Finance. They are who I use to invest and I love them. I always have a referral link for them in the description box below. So yeah, I think that will cover it for this one. If you have not, subscribe so you don't miss the next video in this series. Tap that notification bell. Don't forget to like. Let me know what you think of this one down below. Are you a comfortable investor or is this some kind of gray area for you that you're a little bit scared about? Don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments. This financial community on YouTube has been one of the most welcoming communities I've ever had the pleasure to be a part of. Y'all, a couple years ago, I was completely new to this, to personal finance in general. I didn't even know how to budget, okay? So 
this stuff can be learned. It can be learned very quickly and I think once you realize the full power of it, then you'll get a little obsessed just like me. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. I'm sure this video is going to end up being way long anyway. So I'll see y'all for my next one. Bye.